الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا للإيمان وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله بعث بالدين الحق يظهر على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى تلزس في القرآن وفي السماء رزقكم وما توعدون فورب السماء والأرض إنه لحق مثل مثل ما أنكم تنطقون The meaning of this ayat that we said before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears that in the heavens is our risk. Whatever will be provided for us, for us, it is in the heavens. It's not because of all our work or anything else. It is there for us in the heavens. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears, for Rabbi samawa al ard na la haq. This is the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by himself the God of heavens and earth, this is the truth. Just like you speak yourself, subhanAllah. And the reason I mentioned this ayah is a few years back I asked the Sheikh Abtawab, I want to learn more. I want to learn more about Islam. So he said, you know, I asked him what could I read and he told me read the book, The Words of Wisdom for Ibn Ata'illah Sakandari. And he gave me the name of the book to read. And I started reading it and it was heavy reading. I didn't understand most of it. So I put it aside. And then about a year ago, a friend of mine went back home and came back with a set of tapes. And it was the explanation of this wisdom by Sheikh Omar Abdi Kafi. And subhanAllah, I listened to these tapes about three times because how much to enjoy these words of wisdom. And Sheikh Omar Abdi Kafi starts his tapes by saying, when I start explaining about uh, the, the words of wisdom from uh, uh, Sheikh Ibn Ata'illah Sakandari, people will start saying I'm a Sufi because Ibn Ata'illah Sakandari is one of the lead Sufiya in Islam. So Sheikh Omar Abdi Kafi says, well, if Sufiya means bringing closer to Allah, I am one of them. If Sufiya means uh, rituals, nonsense, and things like that, I have no meaning, I have nothing to do with it. And to describe these words of, uh, the, of Ibn Ata'illah, as Sheikh uh, Omar says, Subhanallah, he is not a prophet or a messenger, and yet when you read his words, they're so crisp and so strong in meanings. And then I was reading another book uh, last week when I was traveling, and again, Sheikh Al Ghazali took the words of wisdom of Ibn Ata'illah Sakandari to explain them, saying they are very important explanation of Islam. And he said, those who put the Sufiya down or put Ibn Ata down is because a lot of people, just like we've mentioned, that Sheikh Al-Ghazali and Sheikh Omar has explained, everybody tries to write book about the words of wisdom of Ibn Ata. And some people strayed when they trying to explain it, went astray. So he said, it's not the fault of Ibn Ata, it's the fault of those who tried to explain it, explained it wrong. And this is what we will try to take some of these words of wisdom, as we say, because it is the ultimate in uh, understanding Islam. So, they tell us, Ibn Ata'illah is giving an example. A man went into a masjid and found a man sitting in the masjid and praying all the time. So he asks him, who provides for you? He said, I made a deal with a friend. He comes every day, bring me my food, and I feel comfortable, and alhamdulillah, all is well. So he says, if you think this man relied on a friend, and he feels comfortable. But why don't we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who says he will provide for us. So when it's a friend, we have the trust and the faith. But when it's Allah who says I will provide, how many of us will have that comfort that it will come on time? And we see this example in the Quran for Bani Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered to them al-manna wa sal the best food every day. But they didn't have this comfort in the heart. They wanted something to cultivate themselves as if that will give them the assurance. 
So we ask Musa alayhi salam, ad'u lana rabbaka yukhrij lana mimma tumbitu al-ard. Ask Allah that we want from what earth gives us. Because what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not provide for us? So this is us humans have most faith, more faith in ourselves than in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we said before, Prophet Dawood or Prophet Sulaiman asked an ant, how many uh, grains of wheat do you eat a year? She told him two, wheat, two grains. So he decides to do an experiment, put the ant in a box and put two grains. And came back in a year and found that the ant had only eaten one grain. So he asks her, you said you eat two. She told him, when my risk is from Allah, I eat and I'm not worried. But when you put me in a box, you are human and you can forget about me. That's why I took care and I was conservative. But the ant knows that Allah will never forget and the risk from Allah is there. And yet we choose to tie our risk with humans rather than accepting the risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man challenged Ali ibn Abi Talib and says, you say it is Allah who provides. So what if we put somebody in a room, build walls around him, how is he going to be provided for? So Ali ibn Abi Talib says the same way Allah could take his life, the same way Allah could provide for him. Would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be able to take his life in this uh, room that has no doors or windows? He said yes. He said Allah can provide for him similarly. Subhanallah. So let's look at, uh, listen to some of the words of Ibn Ata to understand these words of wisdom. So the first thing he says, اجتهادك فيما ضمن لك وتقصيرك فيما طلب منك دليل على التماس البصيرة. The meaning of this, we work hard for something that was guaranteed for us, which he's referring to a risk. So اجتهادك فيما ضمن لك, the risk is guaranteed. And yet we all work hard and we all worry about our risk. وَتَقْصِيرَكْ فِي مَا تُلِبَ لَكَ And slacking off from what was asked from you. It shows a lack of good judgment. It shows lack of good judgment. And we all, this, if we look at all of us, we apply it. We, all our time we're worried about a risk. How are we going to do more when it was guaranteed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask from us? It's not just the prayers. He said, cultivate the land, grow, go and uh, uh, civilize this world, communicate, get together, do everything. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked from us. But all our mind and all our energy is only about the risk which was guaranteed. Subhanallah, a few words from Ibn Ata, but summarizes how we feel and how we do. And then he tell us, anything you ask from Allah, you will guarantee it will never be stopped. It will go forward. But everything you think that you can do yourself, it will be harder. And we probably, a lot of things for us in life, we see this experience, we think something is easy and we get so hard and hard. But when we talk about Allah and we put our face in Allah, it becomes easy, inshallah. And then he tells us, the root of every sin is that self-satisfaction that we think we have done everything. And the root of every blessing is that we're not satisfied with ourselves. So we have to constantly not think that we are perfect. Well, some of us think we sit here and we say, Alhamdulillah, we pray everybody else in hell. In hell. And we are, Alhamdulillah, all of us as well. He says, this is the root of every sin. If we want to be good, we have to realize we are not perfect. And we have to work towards it. And that's why they tell us a sin that you regret and uh, uh, pray to Allah to forgive is better than a, something good that you're proud of and you think you have uh, fulfilled everything. So here, as we said last week, with the Sheikh Al-Ghazali, with the man who drinks a lot, and when the Sheikh Al-Ghazali told him, Taqillah, he said, please ask Allah to forgive me, and he cried. And as we said, the Sheikh Al-Ghazali looked at him and said, I we wish we were all like him. At least he admits his mistakes and he asks Allah for forgiveness and cries for it. But how many of us really admit our mistake and cry for our sins? And then he tells us some of the mistakes of those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to do a lot of nawafil and be slow in doing the wajibat, which what we have to do. And he gave us an example. Our people, our, uh, our duty is to fast Ramadan. And Alhamdulillah, inshallah, we fast. 
Then he says, there is some people who fast outside Ramadan and fast a lot. And then he doesn't do his job because he's tired. So he said, this is now nawafil. The fasting outside Ramadan is an extra. And yet this extra has stopped him from doing another duty, which is his job. He is accountable to do a good job and, uh, and, and deliver good things. And yet because he's tired, he slacks off. So he's saying he has picked an extra over a duty. Another example, he says you find maybe a doctor sitting in the masjid after the prayer spending a lot of time. He says this doctor should be in his clinic treating people. It is his duty to, clear, to treat people. And yet he's doing the nawafil, he's praying extra while leaving people outside being sick and whatnot. So he says again, each one of us have duties and the duties is not just the worship, it's everything else. And yet sometimes we pick something extra over the duty.